Hey guys, Phil Torres from The Jungle Diaries. Right now, I'm in the middle of the woods in the Pacific Northwest with the grocery basket. What am I doing here? Well, I'm not grocery shopping. What I'm doing is foraging for wild mushrooms with one of the best foragers in the Pacific Northwest. He's an amazing educator, knows everything out here, and he's taking me to a secret spot. His name is Scott Stimson. Let's find some shrooms. Let's take some shrooms. Let's go shrooming. Let's, um, let's get in the woods. Our goal today, chanterelle mushrooms. Scott took me up into the mountains on this paved road, then down this dirt road, then stopped at a particular point, and we ended up here. All right, Scott, where are you taking me? Where are we? We are in the woods in the Pacific Northwest. So where specifically We're are we? in Oregon. I see you're being vague. Why, why aren't you telling us where we are? Because we, as foragers, you kind of want to keep your spots to yourself. If I tell you where to go, exactly where to go, you're going to go there, maybe and probably find the mushrooms or the berries or the foods that we're looking for. But there's this extra understanding that comes with learning with me or learning with a forager that slows you down to really give you the whole picture of what's happening in the forest. You don't want you know, a hundred people to come to this exact spot. You want everybody to kind of have their own journey. Exactly. And by doing the time, spending the hours, the miles, the places hiked, the failures, you'll then have success and you become more intimate with the forest that way. All right, you guys heard it from Scott himself. He's not even telling me where we are. He blindfolded me, stuck me in the trunk of his car and took me out here. Okay, that, that didn't really happen, but basically, uh, you know, it's important to keep it a secret. Let everybody do the work, get to know the forest, and have the right guide. And for me, Scott's the perfect guide to show me everything out here, and I can't wait to fill these baskets with some wild goodies. Now, one of the first things to learn about chanterelles are the plants associated with them. In this case, you could see the mossy, ferny forest floor with lots of salal, and then Scott points out a very important one to know. Yeah, there's a little vine maple. Vine maple. So this is the vine maple, which is usually a really good indicator of mushrooms down below. So, we're going in. And then, we got one. You got something? Yeah, we got our first uh, chanterelle right here. So we got some of the ferns, and it's just hanging out right underneath it. And, uh... Wow. There you go. Wow. It's, it's so what, what tells you this is a chanterelle? So chanterelles have something called false gills. You can see kind of the, the gill markings under there, but these are called false gills because they're not actually fully developed. They're kind of more like ridges underneath there. Chanterelles also break like chalk, so you can just kind of split them open. Cool. Um, there are false chanterelles out there as well. Uh, false chanterelles are going to have your actual gills on there, but they, they don't break like chalk. They're more flimsy and soft. Um, this is what we're looking for. A reminder here. Do not use just this video to ID chanterelles or any other edible mushroom. Use a field guide and an expert opinion before diving in. Wow. But we're gonna go find some good ones. Cool, yeah. let's do it. First find. First find. Okay, what are you seeing? Some uh, golden chanterelles right over here. Uh, do you watch where you step? Cause you got some right over there where you put your knee down too. Wow. So. Okay, let me get this. So they like to really hide under the moss. Give this a little wiggle. And there's... Wow. wow. There's two. Oh my gosh. Look at that. So I see where they get the name Golden. Yeah, these are definitely in brighter orange gold color. And then... Uh, uh, when I forage, I like to always make sure that I clean and field. I don't want to throw all my mushrooms into the basket because this 
debris and dirt, if I throw all these mushrooms into a basket together, this dirt is gonna get embedded into this mushroom and make it for a lot harder of a cleaning session when I get home. So these knives are always great, a little brush on it. What brand is that one? This is a Macerin. It's an Italian brand. Yeah. Okay, so we brush in the mushroom. Yep. And then you can just cut the base right off. Wow. And then uh, you've got your cleaned up mushroom. You can use the tip of the knife to get this little bit out too. And then we're getting to the basket. We're just getting started today. Okay, time for me to give it a shot. Scott just found some over here, but there's one right by my knee. So, if I uncover it here, you can see that little bit of gold sticking out. Ooh. And this one has some eating on it, still okay to eat? Yes. Okay, so I wanna kind of put my hands down low and pluck. Yep, give it a wiggle, and there you go. Wow. Oh, it's a little family. Old family mushrooms. <laughs> okay, now time to do some. Oh, we got a spider on me. There you go, buddy. And then I use the knife to cut the base off. Mm hmm. So where would I want to cut it? Like right there? Right there is probably a perfect spot. You cut it, you made it look way better. You do it like this? Correct, yep. You can use your thumb to support the backside so you don't cool. shred the mushroom up. Nice job. That was my first time brushing and cutting and cleaning a mushroom. <laughs> but not my last. It's a surprisingly therapeutic and relaxing pastime treasure hunt in the woods with a side of slow mushroom maintenance and a future of a delicious meal. So we found this amazing patch and uh, it tends to go. It's kind of looking like we're 10 meters this way, 10 meters that way and just kind of expanding around and around and trying to find more and we're finding tons of them. Uh, now the important part is making sure we could Find our way back to the car, but I'm hoping Scott knows which direction that is. Otherwise, I mean, at least we got food to eat. So is this the type of spot that we could come back to year after year and there's still be mushrooms here? Yes. Why is that? Like, what's the biology of mushrooms that allows that to be possible? So the what we're finding when you find a mushroom is you're finding the fruiting body. This is how it's going to send its spores out into the atmosphere and go to different areas. Underneath the soil is where the mycelium is, or the roots of the mushrooms. So these chanterelles, the organism is living underneath the soil in connection to the roots of the trees around us. So, right now, this time of the year, this is when it puts up its fruiting body to reproduce. And then, it goes away for a year, and it's going to come back again so long as this remains a healthy forest ecosystem. So, we were talking about mycelium a moment ago. Those are the essential, the, the roots of the mushrooms. But again, it's called mycelium. So under this log, we're gonna take a look to see if we can find any under here. It's usually a good spot to look. Whoa. And there we are. So all of that white stuff is mycelium. So right here, that's where the mycelium is kind of spreading out. You can see the little strands. And so it's kind of in this growth to go all throughout the forest. And there's miles of that underneath us. So these mushrooms are living here even when we can't see them. Correct. They're doing totally fine. We're only seeing one part of them, but the rest is kind of secret underneath logs like this. Correct. And this time of the year, so in the fall is when we get more rains. And so that's when the mycelium has this humidity and this moisture to allow these mushrooms to grow. I'm in the spring when all the snow is melting, all this liquid is then going into the ground, the temperatures are rising, the humidity is coming back, and the mushrooms are growing as well. Now that we've learned what's happening underneath our feet in this forest, let's find some oh. mushrooms. You see some back there? Check it out. We struck gold. Sure did. So it's got a little rainy, 
Uh, let me wipe this lens. That's better. Um, check this out. There are some giant mushrooms around me, and sometimes you see the most obvious one. But then you look around and you see some of these hidden ones. And so where you thought you were going to find one mushroom, you really find like five, six, seven, ten. Look at this. So, obvious mushroom here. Not so obvious mushroom there. Another one back in there. Another one, I don't know if you could see it, back in there. That is a big mushroom. We've hit the mother load. Look at the size of that. Like, come on. Oh. This is like an entire meal in a mushroom. How crazy. It's crazy when you realize that these things literally just like push up through the ground. That's why the top of them is always so dirty at first. It's not until they really kind of get exposed, get rained on, can kind of get washed off. So if it's dirty on top, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That just means it's really fresh and just now coming out of the ground. After searching around for a few hours, we ended up finding chantron mushrooms everywhere. Look what we got. Look what we got. Right in here. That is a lot of mushrooms. Wow, look at that. Beauty. Thank you, Forrest. And what do they taste like? So chanterelles are big on texture. Uh, they have this nice crunch to them where a lot of folks tend to associate mushrooms with slimy. Chanterelles don't have that sliminess. They have more of this crunchy, earthy, um, texture and flavor to them. It's not going to be like your portobello mushroom. These are just gonna honestly have their own flavor profile of umami in themselves. Mm. And while it seems like we're harvesting a lot, believe me, there were so many more we didn't pluck. This forest has chanterelles aplenty. Okay, well there we have it. I mean, how good of a day is that to wander through the woods, get a little rained on, go off trail, find some wild mushrooms that are just going to be some of the best things to eat for the season. It's amazing. Um, huge thank you to Scott for sharing his expertise. If you guys don't follow him already, check him out on Instagram. It's what, what is it? Woodland Cravings. Woodland Cravings. <laughs> Woodland Cravings. I'll put the link below in the comments. Um, but yeah, a wealth of resource this guy has. And I've learned so much today. And I'm going to be so full tonight eating all these shrooms.